Hey guys, it's Simon off of Two Brothers Productions, and today I have another video about watches. This time I'm taking a step back from, you know, a review of a watch, and now I'm talking about watch basics. This is going to be the first of maybe a couple different watch basics videos, and these are these are videos for the people that know nothing about watches, which is completely fine because I knew nothing about watches getting into the hobby. And um, the last video I posted, which was about the Casio Duro, I'll link that kind of up here in that little corner, um, talked, uh, there were a couple of different comments that were like, yeah, I like your video, I think it was interesting, and I like watches, but I had no idea what any of the stuff that you were talking about. Because I was saying some words that might not make any sense or in, don't make any sense uh, in the context of the video. So I wanted to clarify some of that, and the first thing we're going to do is just talk about the utmost simple the most simplistic watch basics and then we'll get into the anatomy quote unquote of a watch so you have watches that are digital that means like a digital clock with the numbers displayed uh, instead of hands so you have digital watches and you have analog similar to this one it has hands and it tells the time using hands um, so yeah those are two of the terms that you might hear. I might say it's an analog watch or it is a digital watch or some watches are digiana or sorry analog ano digi something like that uh, where it is an analog watch that displays a digital uh, complication uh, or section down somewhere over here over here that also displays the digital time or date. The next thing you might hear is me saying a quartz movement or a mechanical movement or a hand winding movement now, I don't have any mechanical watches on the table, but if I was to bust this thing open, you'd see a little battery and a little like microchip and some other stuff that is just looks like, you know, just looks like some electronics in there. And basically what it is, is it's a little quartz crystal in there that's vibrating really, 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 really fast. And the, um, like the mechanics in there, this is like kind of, you know, I don't know a lot about this, so don't take my, don't. Don't take what I say, uh, you know, take it with a grain of salt, I guess, is trying, what I'm trying to say here. But there's a little quartz crystal that weighs really, really fast, kind of like a tuning fork. And the it somehow it reads it, it reads how quickly those that thing is moving, and that's how it tells the time. Then the mechanics move that second hand, jolts it forward to the next position. Now, you might hear mecha quartz. Mecha quartz tend to just be a better quartz movement with a little bit smoother hand set um, hand movements and the reason people and you can see that second hand actually you know how it ticks tick tick mechanical movements which are gears and springs that move it and if you sometimes it'll have a little um, like a little plate that spins around whenever you move it that charges up the watch um, and you'll notice that when that's happening because it's a because it's a gear movement that second hand will move without ticking um, and a lot of higher end pieces will have that second hand that moves without ticking instead of that tick 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 um, the differences and the reason people will choose quartz is because one it's cheaper and two um, in the most simplistic terms it's a lot more accurate you'll be able to tell the time a little bit better without maintenance uh, there, there are many many videos all over the internet talking about you know quartz and mechanical it's a debate that goes on I don't really care. I buy a watch that I like the look of, and if it can tell me the time, that's what I look for. But those are two more terms you might hear. Now, let's talk about straps. So when you hear a strap, that tends to mean like a NATO strap, a rubber strap. But if you hear watch bands, that can also mean a rubber band, a leather band. Bracelets tends to be talking about metal. So like a Milanese uh, bracelet, which is like a mesh kind of bracelet. Um, so those are a couple different things you might hear me say. Um, it doesn't matter. Basically, you'll know you'll know in the context of what I'm saying, um, what I mean, and then strap or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so a strap is just you know the thing that holds that that watch to your wrist, basically, in the most simplistic of terms. Now. Let's go through watch anatomy. The watch anatomy tends to get a little bit more complicated uh, because each watch is very, very different. So I'm going to take this bad boy 
huh? And we're just going to talk about the watch. This is the case. The case is that everything that holds the movement and the face inside, basically the watch holder. So when I say case diameter, that talks about this right here, this diameter. The next thing you might see is a crown, a little thing that sticks out the side. You can pull that out and you move it. I'm not going to change the time, but you move it and pull it out to set the time. The next thing you might hear is a watch face. The watch face is not the glass, but the actual face of the watch with the Timex, the Indiglo, and those indices printed on there, or in the case, applied on there. Next thing you might hear is lugs. Lugs is this little sticky out part. <laughs> Sorry, that's the most like unconventional way of explaining it. It's the sticky out part, basically, that sticks out, and that will hold this little piece right here, which actually comes off, Oops. which actually comes off, which is the spring bar. The spring bar will hold your leather straps to it. You see that little hole right there? spring bar will go in there and hold that so it holds it up there um so yeah the lugs spring bars now the case back it's obviously this back piece because if i i could actually pop this off in some cases the case back is a screwed on case back so i, un I would unscrew this and you'd see the movement in there and that allows you to modify your watches if you're a modding person um, or just get to the inside of your watches is basically what holds it all in the back um, but if you hear a display case back, I don't have one around here, that's normally for mechanical watches, and that will be a little piece of glass back there that allows you to see the movement moving. Um, I'll, yeah, I'm, I have a mechanical watch on the way in the mail, and I'll show you that when I get it, I'll show you the movement, and we can like, talk about the movement there. Now you'll hear another thing that talks about, you know, you'll hear people say hardlex, or sapphire gla glass, or mineral crystal. Um, that just talks about this little glass that protects you from, you know, from hitting that watch face. Now, not all crystals are created equal. This is like a hard lex or a mineral crystal. This will scratch really, really easily. It's really cheap. It tends to be used on budget watches. Um, sapphire is a lot harder, a little bit more brittle. It will shatter. It's more like glass, but it won't scratch. You have a hell of a time trying to scratch a sapphire crystal compared to this, which is very scratch from. I don't think you can see it on this Duro here. Maybe you can. It's not wonderful quality video. I think it's zoomed in a little bit. Uh, yeah, but there's some scratches on that. Really scratch prone. Next thing you'll hear somebody talk about, just at some point, is the complications on a watch. The complications is pretty self-explanatory. It's an extra complicated part that instead of just telling the time. Let me demonstrate. Complications could be something as simple as a date window. A date window is something else that doesn't just tell the time, it's an added mechanism that's put in there. In quartz watches, it's not a big deal, they just add another part to the microchip, not a big deal. Um, but yeah, it's an extra bit that they have to worry about. Look at something like a chronograph, which has even more. It has a stopwatch, it has a second hand. If I start this up, see that starts to tell the time as a, as a, um, a stopwatch. Um, yeah, so those are complications. Those are the things that are added on there that aren't just telling the time. Now the next thing, and almost pretty much the last thing you're going to hear um, when you, when people talk about the watch anatomy is the power reserve. That one's pretty uh, self-explanatory. That talks about, and that's the majority of the time with mechanical watches. Uh, it talks about how long the mechanical watch can go before it runs out. Because remember, mechanical watches aren't like this. They don't You don't stick a battery in it it as a self-running so you either wind it up like old watches you wind it up like that or you shake it and it then there's that little rotor back there that moves around and charges up the watch a lot of watches you'll hear like 30 hour power reserve 40 hour power reserve and that basically means if you have watches that are in rotation and aren't on you all the time you'll have to come back and either um, next time you want to wear it set the time and spin that little dial or shake it around and get that thing moving again now the last couple things that you might hear me talk about is actually watch tools because sometimes uh, the watch you know you, you need watch tools to uh, like take these spring bars out or whatever and the last couple things you're gonna hear me talk about are this little handy dandy tool right here is really creatively named the spring bar remover and I'm sure you can't guess what this one's for it's to remove the spring bars 
you use it as just kind of a multi-purpose tool, but you use that little end and it pops out those spring bars when you need it. This next piece right here is actually a spring bar removal tool right there. This one's a cheapo one that you get with when you buy a lot of different straps off Amazon. And then that little end there without any texturing, this is actually called a bergeon. Um, the actual, the entirety of this is called a bergeon or a spring bar remover. And the bergeon is a lot of times you'll look on the side of watches. You see how it has those little holes in the lugs. Those are also to quite simply stick your bergeon in there and pop out those spring bars. Um, so, you know, people use their bergeon to knock out those spring bars or their spring bar removal tool to get in there and just pull that back and remove it. So those are the two, you know, most used tools. If I ender, ever end up doing a modification video, which I do want to do, I like the idea of modding watches, um, I'll let you know what other tools I'll end up using. But yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to watches and watch, you know, you know, basics. Um, I will, again, I'll link down that Business Insider, is that what it's called? Yeah, the Business Insider article, and there's this company or this uh, website called Watch Time. Um, I'll show it up there. You go, you scroll over to up there on the, the bar with all the, the articles. You go to watches. You go down to watch term glossary. And then down there, you'll see just a myriad of different, like, you know, words and vocabulary to research. And they give really in-depth reviews of, or explanations to each of those words. So if you have any other questions about watch watches um, or anything that you might not have understood or you want to better explanation of it because I'm not super great at explaining things uh, go to any of those they'll be able to explain it a little bit better than I did again leave any comments down below if you have any questions suggestions uh, I'm gonna start doing travel videos soon uh, you know what again we're gonna do travel videos more watch videos coming up um, make sure to subscribe and like and share with your friends if you think they'll enjoy it